Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to recreate the character poster for Eternals in Photoshop. One of my YouTube subscribers recently asked me to do a tutorial for the Eternals poster. I was really impressed with the character posters for this film, so I decided to do a tutorial on those. Here you can see the original, here you can see our photo, and what we're going to turn it into. Now if you want to follow along, I have included all the assets that I've used in a link in the description of this video, so you can go ahead, download those, and then let's dive into Photoshop and get started. Okay, so this is the poster that we're going to be recreating, or copying I should say, because uh, obviously we don't have this photo. Um, and what are the basic characteristics here that we want to emulate? So for starters, her skin is very, very clean. She almost has no defects except for this one obvious uh, beauty mark. Her eye is very in focus and then the focus drops off quickly as it goes away from her eye. We have some bokeh and light sparks here. Uh, we have a strong green color grade, and then we have our titles. All right, so let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is go to File, New. I could also just push this button, and we're gonna create a document that is 1667 pixels wide by 2500 pixels high at 72 resolution. We're gonna do RGB color, 8-bit, and we're gonna use a black background. So let's go ahead and hit create. The next thing I'm going to do is just create some guides. This will help you as you're following along to see where I'm placing things. So let's go to view, new guide layout, and here we're going to start with four columns and three rows. Make sure the gutter is at uh, zero for both of these. I'm going to turn on the margin, leave all these at zero except for the bottom, which I'm going to make uh, 210. And let's hit OK. All right, next I'm going to go File, Place Embedded, and we're going to grab our file in the Assets folder called Eternals Model. And this is actually a photo I took for a different photo shoot that was inspired by Maleficent but it's gonna work pretty well for this. And I've already set the DNG file here or the raw file how I want it. So down here, we just wanna make sure this says 8-bit. You can click on that and change the bit depth that it opens in. 8-bit is fine. I'm gonna hit okay and that will place it. And here I want to scale it up. I want her chin to be on this guide right here. And once I have that in place, I'm gonna put my anchor point there. So as I scale this up holding option, it'll scale from that anchor point. And I want her eye to be right about there and in the center there. So right about there is where I want it. I think that's all good. So let's hit okay. Uh, this is a smart object right now if I double click it it's going to open it back up in Camera Raw. Um, for the next set of steps, I want a rasterized version of this. So I'm going to make a copy so I always have my original to go back to. Then I'm going to right mouse click and say Rasterize Layer. And we'll call this Model. And let's go ahead and turn off our guides. Um, we can just go here, Extras, Command H. That will turn off our guides. And the next thing here we're going to do is frequency separation. And frequency separation is where you separate the low frequency information, such as, you know, this highlight from this shadow, to the high frequency information, which is these tiny skin pores, everything that's really high resolution. Now, I have other um, tutorials which cover all the steps of this. Um, which I'll link to in the description. But here I'm just going to use uh, one of my nuclear actions, which is frequency separation 8-bit. 
that's going to set up all my frequency separation layers here. So I've got my high frequency, my low frequency, and then my original. And what I want to do is go onto the low frequency and start blurring um, out the low frequency information, and that'll start getting me some really nice smooth skin. Now there's a few ways to do this. Um, if you look at various tutorials, probably the most common one is people use a lasso with a feather here and then select areas like this and then go up to filter Gaussian blur and start blurring. And you'll see that that's creating a nice smooth skin. The problem I have with this is it creates this kind of fake plastic look. So that is not my preferred method. I like to use a mix brush. And with a mix brush, what I can do is here you wanna make sure it's a clean brush. You don't want the color to load into the brush. Um, what that means is when I start painting, it's not going to source the color that I start painting and use that in the brush. Instead, it's gonna clean the brush every time I start painting again. All right, and then settings wise, you want this pretty low, some, something under 50. Um, and then you want the load, which is how much of the color loads into it. Also somewhere around 50 or below. And you want the mix to be relatively low as well. So maybe 35 on the mix. And then for the flow, I would start this at relatively low. So we can go like 20 um, or maybe 25 to start with. So these are kind of good starting ones. I don't want sample all layers because I do not want it to sample anything but the low frequency. So with that done, what I'm going to do now is just start painting. And the beauty of this is I can adjust my brush size with my standard control option and then drag left, right shortcut. So where I need to paint in smaller areas, I can do that. Now you can see there, it's kind of taking too much information. It took this light and spread it all the way to there. So I'm gonna turn my load even lower down to 20%. And then we're just gonna start painting. And what it's doing is it's blurring. If I turn off my high frequency, you can see that the brush is essentially just a Gaussian blur brush. But because it's a brush, I can adjust my size as I work and make sure that it doesn't have that plastic look. And I can kind of go, go with the contour of her face. I just have a lot more control doing it this way. Now, when I do this, I do keep my high frequency turned on so I can see what my final result is going to look like. And here we're going to go and just paint out any deformities in her skin to match that poster look, which has super smooth skin. And if you do have a Wacom, um, this would be a good time to use it. I actually do have one, but for the sake of all the people who don't have one, I'm gonna do this entire tutorial with just my mouse. Even here, I can push a little bit more light into this dark area by starting the brush in the lighter area, kind of pushing that light toward the darkness. So kind of achieving two things here by using the brush instead of the Gaussian blur method. Um, the, high, the high detail areas, such as our lips and our eyes, you do not want to go over. You want to make sure you miss those entirely. And the larger area of skin, obviously, the larger brush you can use. And I think this looks really good. Maybe. And because I know that uh, with this design, as we looked at at the beginning, I know I'm going to go out of focus away from her eye. So I mainly want to get her face area. I'm not so worried about this neck here or anything else. So I think that looks really good. Um, now, the reason I have an original here and a low frequency as separate layers is I can then take the opacity on this down just a little bit to get some of the original skin texture showing through. Now, usually I would do this at about 70%. Um, that looks more real. 
as opposed to 100% still has that plastic look. Um, but for this, um, the poster itself does have a bit of that overly cleaned up look. So I'm going to push this up to about 85 for this. Good. All right. Then I'm going to make a layer above all this and just flatten all my layers into here. And I can do that by doing shift option command E that's going to merge all my layers into here. I do want to keep these um, just in case I ever want to go backwards, but for now I don't need those. The one other thing I want to do here is get rid of this one piece of hair. Whoops. One piece of hair coming off her chin and also make this background gray a little bit darker. So I should be able to select it all just with a quick selection here. So let's go ahead and use that. And that should do the trick in terms of the selection. Let's go to our select and mask. Um, let's turn on the radius. Okay, so they have not yet fixed this tool. I really hope Photoshop does soon. Um, about two years ago, they wrecked it. And now whenever you use this smart radius, you get these uh, stepped artifacts. So for the time being, we're not going to use that. We can maybe add a little bit of feather there. I think that looks fine. Let's hit OK. And I'm going to create a new layer, go on to my healing brush tool, which is basically a clone stamp tool. And I want to go on all layers here. So it samples the layers underneath. And I'm going to select here and just paint this out. And you can see there it's retained some of her chin information. If we go to, um, where is it here? Replace, let's see if this works better. And you can see that that actually works a lot better. Um, that used to be con called content aware, I think in the, in the previous version of Photoshop. So they now have better names for them. This is a little more obvious. So this is the normal and this is the replace for here. We want replace which works a little bit like the standard clone stamp tool, but with the added benefit of the AI. Okay, uh, we do have these little anomalies here. I'm gonna clean that up by just using my pen tool, which is my favorite tool for making nice curved selections. I'm just gonna do a nice selection that follows her chin line here. And the reason I like using the pen tool is because I can go back and make small adjustments here. So something like this. And then we're going to go right mouse click and make selection. You can do a 0.5 pixel radius on there. And then using my healing brush tool again with replace, I'm going to make this a bit smaller and then just clean that edge up there. That looks much better. All right, next thing we want to do is make this whole background area a little bit darker. So let me just merge this into here. So I'm going to do Command E. That's going to merge those two layers together and go back onto our quick selection tool and select this area again. Let's do that again. There you go. Okay. I don't want to select the eye. So I'm going to hit Q. That's going to turn my selection into a mask that I can paint with black and white. So here I'm just going to go onto my general brushes, select a soft round brush, make my brush smaller, and then hit D to default my colors to black and white. And then I can start painting in here. I want to make sure the flow is on 100. And just paint in what I want in my selection here. So something like that. And the rest looks pretty good. Hit Q again to take me out of the quick mask. And then just add a curve and make it darker. Something like that I think is nice. And for this, I'm just pulling down the middle of the curve. Okay, good. 
All right, now we're gonna take these two and I'm gonna make these a smart object. And the reason I'm making these a smart object is not so much that I want those two layers editable later, but I want to apply a filter and I want the filter to be editable in the future. And by applying a filter to a smart object, you can always go back and adjust that filter after the fact. And for this, we're gonna use an iris blur. What I wanna do here is place the iris right on her eye there. Pull this in relatively close, uh, cause this is gonna get out of focus really fast. So we're gonna do something like this, kinda of pull this in closer. And if I hold down uh, one of these, okay. Option is just gonna pull down this. And I want it to gradually get more and more out of focus. So let's increase the out of focus here. I want this even closer. And I want this, let's see here. There you go. So I want this about like this. I'm kind of looking at this eye here as my gauge because I want that out of focus. So there, and, but I do want some of this. So I might actually push this over here. Everything inside this diamond shape is gonna be in focus. So I want the eye and part of this cheek area to be in focus. So something like this looks pretty nice. All right, let's hit okay. Okay, and because this is a smart object, I can always go in here and adjust it after the fact. Although I don't think I'll want to, um, but you have that option. Uh, looking at, comparing it again, I do think her lip is a little bit too much in focus. And also this might just be a little bit too out of focus. So what we're going to do is basically pull this up so that her lip is more out of focus and then just turn down the out of focus a little bit. I think 30 looks pretty good. Okay. <clears throat> so that's getting a very similar effect to the original where we have her eye very in focus and then it quickly goes out of focus for the rest of the image. So pretty happy with that. The next thing I want to do is add these very strong white highlights. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to add a new layer. We're going to call this white highlights. I'm going to do shift option command E, merge everything into that layer. And then I'm going to do shift option command B, which is going to bring up my black and white. You can also find that I'm under image adjustments. And here I want to adjust these. So I'm just getting this strong highlight on her nose, kind of on her chin here, maybe a little bit here. So let's adjust these. I think I'll probably turn most of these all the way to black. Really, we're just focusing on these. That's where our skin tones are. I think something like this. So let's hit okay. And now we have um, this area here, which I want to go to dark. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do Command M to bring up my curve adjustment. And I wanna push this to black. So this is all black. And then I wanna start pushing this up. So I just have those really strong white highlights, something like this. All right, I'm gonna hit okay. And I'm going to add a layer on top here called Blackout. Um, I could usually just do this with a mask on this, but for the, for the purpose of demonstration, this is going to be a little bit easier to see what I'm doing. So with a black brush here, I want to paint out the areas that I don't want in my highlight. So I don't want her eyes. I don't want any of her neck. Um, I don't really want her lips. And I don't want this eye. I'm just painting this with black. 
And I kind of don't want this cheek either. I kind of want it just on her nose here, so. Something like this. Good. So now I can merge these two just with Command E again and then put this on screen. You can see we've got this um, spots here where it's not pure black. I can just do Command M, sorry, Command M, and just bring down this black point until those disappear. So there you go. Okay, and then I'm gonna make this a smart object so that I can add a blur and adjust it later if I want to. I'm gonna add a Gaussian blur on this. And Gaussian blur this, I think about 6.5 looks good. And now I can also add a mask and with a black brush, I'm going to set the flow really low. I'm just going to paint out where I don't want it to be quite as strong. So I don't want it quite as strong on her cheek right there. And it's a little overpowering on her forehead. So let me just take those out and something like that. So now it's kind of mainly on this ridge here, a little bit there and a little bit on her forehead. And I think that looks really nice. The other thing I want to do is just punch up the eye highlight here. So I'm going to add one more, call this eye highlight. For this, I'm going to put it on overlay and then with a white brush, just paint right in here. And my flow is still low, so each stroke is not doing too much. You can also just add a little bit of highlight in the eye itself. I think that looks pretty nice. Good. And I think this whole layer is a little strong. So let me take this down about 75%. Good. Okay, next we're going to add the dust and the embers. For that, I'm going to use one of my brushes, actually. So let's call this, um, we can call this bouquet. These will be the bigger bouquet drops. So I'm going to go to my brush, right mouse click, and I have my nuclei water brushes here. And if I go toward the bottom of these, I have this large drops brush, and this is kind of a bouquet brush. So I like this, um, it does great for just adding like these bouquet drops. It's a little too big, so let's make it a bit smaller. And we want this pretty, pretty subtle. So maybe just like that. And then I can move this to where I want it, probably somewhere around there. I don't like this one, so I'm just gonna go with an erase tool and erase that one and make this one a lot weaker. Okay, I think that looks pretty nice. I'm gonna blur that a bit too. And then I want a little bit down here. For that, I'm gonna use an overlay. Um, and I'm gonna use one of my other overlays here, I believe it's one of my water overlays. Let's see, water. I have one with a few nice bouquets. Could be this one. I'll include what, whichever one I end up using, I'll include in the assets. But I think it's this one. And this just gives us some nice patterns here. And this is taken with a camera so it's all you know actually real let's put that on screen see how that looks okay so it's a little too strong um, let's get rid of that one and I'm gonna go to my dust overlays let's see if those might be better this one I think this is the one I want yeah, I like this. Okay, and this got those nice strong ones there. Okay, so let's go something like this. I want these strong drops down here. 
let's put that on screen. And we're going to take this down and add a mask here and make um, let's just go up to our brushes here. Let's select one of these. I don't want it on mix brush. I want this uh, something like that. There you go. I'm not paint out all the ones that are in her face. I just want these lower ones down here. And I'm also going to blur it so that um, so that they don't look as in focus. Something like that looks good. Okay, and then I'm going to make bring up the opacity now, I think. I want these down here to be pretty strong. So something like this. Maybe paint this one out even more, something like that. So that's kind of the small spots that I want on there. If I want a little more dust, I could just go and with one of my uh, dust brushes or smaller water brushes. Um, let's see here. I think I have one that's just really small. Yeah, this one like fine water. I'm just going to add maybe two spots of that. And I can bring this down here. Maybe give that a bit of a blur too. And also erase that inner face area. Something like that I think is pretty good. Okay, next I'm gonna take all these that make up the bouquet and dust and all that. And I'm going to merge them. So Command E, and then I can put them back on screen. Now, because they're all one layer now, I can do Command M and give them a bit of color. And I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow to them and a little bit of cyan. That's gonna kind of push them toward green. All right, next, I want to add a subtle gradient coming in here. That's going to give us a start to give us that green color. So we'll call this green gradient. And for this, I'm going to use a color uh, 10370B. And with our gradient tool, make sure it's going from foreground to transparent. Just going to start it not here but kind of outside of the image so about here and then go to about where her eye is i don't want it totally straight i kind of want it to follow this curve of her face so something like this and then another one just subtly down there so something like that i put that on screen and then i'm going to add a color curve and this is going to do all the heavy lifting for our gradient or sorry, our color grade to make it green. So first let's go to green. I'm gonna add a spot here and then just kind of lift up the bottom and that's gonna add green into our highlights. I don't want it to curve so much. So what I'm gonna do is add another point to keep it straight. So I just want the bottom of the curve there to add green into our blacks. Next, I'm gonna go to my red and for the red, I want to lift it up a bit here, but then pull it down here. And that's going to add green to all, or cyan to all of our shadows. So this one's going to be quite a bit more. So probably something all the way maybe down to about there. And this is uh, obviously starting to get the look I want, but I need more yellow in there. So I'm going to go to the blue, do kind of a similar thing. Hold it up there and then push more of that yellow into the shadow areas like this. All right, and then on my RGB curve, I'm gonna make it a little bit lighter and a little bit darker in the shadows, so something like this. So already that's almost where I want it. Um, having done this, I do think that our highlight layer here is a little too strong still. So I'm gonna take that down just a little more even though it is pretty strong in the original poster. So something like that. And then I want some of the original color in 
her face. So what I'm gonna do is on this curves mask with my black foreground color and a linear gradient, I'm gonna switch to this radial gradient here, change the opacity to about 10%, and then just do a gradient kind of down her face like this. Now, every time I do this, it's gonna make it more and more of the original color is gonna show through. So I'm only doing 10%. You can kind of see on the mask here, if I option click on it, it's not done that much. And it'll just add a little bit more each time. So that gives me more control. Kind of like the way that's looking there. I do think she has a little too much red in her face. So I'm gonna to go to the red, just kind of take it down in the highlights there. So maybe to there. but that's looking pretty similar to our original. And I think in terms of the artwork, I'm pretty happy with this. So the next thing we're gonna do is our titling. And for the titles, I'm going to turn our guides back on. So let's show our guides. And we can put all this into a folder called artwork. Keep our file nice and organized here. I'm gonna go D to default. I'm gonna make sure my foreground color here is white. I'm gonna go in the text tool. And for the first letters, I want Sweet Sans Pro Thin, which is an Adobe Typekit font. So if you don't have it, just click on here, uh, find it on the Adobe website and activate it in your account. Uh, we want it thin, 160 point and when you're on the type tool, Command T, which is usually transform, actually brings up your uh, character palette. So if I start typing here and go Command T, that brings up my character palette. I want the tracking here to be 600. That's kind of important. And that's going to uh, push these letters quite far apart. Here, we're just going to make up a name for her because she is obviously not a character in the film. I'm going to call her Aurora. Um, and let's push this down to about there. Okay, and then for the Eternals lettering, we're gonna use a different font. So let's, I'm gonna just unclick here, that way my text tool is no longer associated with this layer and I can change my fonts without changing this. So that's important, because if you have the layer selected, you start changing your font here, it's gonna affect it here. You don't want that. I by clicking here, deselecting the layer. You can also go here and deselect layers. Now, if I start changing this, it's not gonna affect that type. And the font I wanna use here is called Caesar Regular. And this is a free font and I've included in the assets. And we're gonna make this 114 point. And let's go right to this is where I want the baseline to be. We're gonna type in Eternals. For this, let's open up our character, Command T. We want the tracking here to be 360. And we can just push that to the center there. Okay, and we're gonna do some letter styling to this. So let's zoom in here. And let's push that so it's right on that line there. And I'm gonna do Command H, um, hide extras there. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna go to our layer styles here, and I'm gonna add a pattern overlay to it. And in my pattern overlays here, under my nuclei patterns, I have this one that's just some light scratches. Um, one of these here. Let's see which one it is. Not that one, not that one, that one, that one, this one, there it is. Okay, so you can see that's a pattern just of light scratches. What that's gonna do is it's gonna break up these letters. We can scale it up. Um, I just want those letters not to be fully um, in place, I guess you could say, not, not so clean. And then we're just gonna take the opacity down on this to about 45. Next, I want a gradient overlay. And the reason I did the pattern first is this kind of works as a layer stack. So 
the pattern is going to sit underneath the gradient overlay. And the overlay, we're going to put this on multiply. Let's open it up. The first color is going to be this color here, FAFDC6. That's going to be our light color at the top. So we want that to be up there. And then I want the opacity here to be at 100%. So let's adjust that there. So the top ones here adjust opacity and then the bottom ones adjust color. That's on your gradient editor. So for the bottom one, I'm going to use my second color, which is EBC876. And there you go. That's starting to look how we want it. Next, I'm going to add a tiny bevel effect. For this, I'm going to do a inner bevel. Let's just reset this to default. I'm going to do one pixel. I'm going to turn off the global light and I want that to be 9030 and I want this to be like this using this kind of upside down U and I'm going to turn the screen all the way down and this is just adding a very 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 subtle little bevel to the bottom of this. You can hardly see it but I promise you it is doing a little bit of work there. Next I'm going to add a very subtle drop shadow so let's add that I'm going to reset the default and just up this to about 35 pixels. And that's very subtle there. Okay. Next, we're going to add these little um, highlights on here. So let's go in here and I'm going to go to my flare library. And I want kind of a long straight flare. So something like this. Um, Let's see which one. If I have a warmer one, I want that. Yeah, I think I'm going to start with this. And we can change up the color. All right, so let's put that in. I'm going to make it significantly smaller. I'm also going to make it more squashed like this. And then I'm going to blur and just actually not Gaussian blur. I'm going to use a motion blur on this one because I want to keep the lines nice and this nice and sharp, but I want to get rid of the um, up and down or vertical lines there. So something like this works pretty nicely. So 30 pixels and then I want to change the color. So there's many ways I could change the color, but I think the simplest is I'm going to just going to do command U take down the saturation to zero, and then go to Command B for color balance. And I want the highlights to be yellow, and I want the shadows to be red, but not too much. Something like this. Maybe the mid-tone's a little bit redder. I think something like that looks pretty good. Okay, let's, it's got a bit of a cyan tinge to it. So I think I need to go a little bit redder like that. All right, then we're going to put this on a screen. I also don't need it to be a smart object anymore. It's just going to take up unnecessary space. So, but before I do that, you'll notice that it has a little bit of a line at the top and the bottom. That's something you always have to be careful for in a flare. So just go on a black linear gradient, make sure your opacity is 100, and go from where you see that line kind of toward it. And that's just going to get rid of any of that hard line there. Then I can apply this layer, actually rasterize the layer first, then apply the layer mask. And now I have a nice flare that I can use multiple times. Okay, so let's make a copy of this. I'm going to keep my original just in case. I'm going to start making this smaller. And this one's going to go on the E. And let's take the opacity down just a scotch. And I think this is also just a little bit too spread across. Okay, so we're going to have one on the E there. This one's going to be on the T. This one's going to be on the E. And to make a copy, I'm just holding down Option and dragging it. 
This one's going to go there. This one's going to go there. Let's copy this one. Now to select, if you don't have auto select on, which I suggest you don't because I hate this, make sure that's off and then make sure this is on layer. And then when you hold down command, it'll temporarily turn this on. So you can click on the layer that you want then hold down option and drag it to where you want. Okay, so that does the trick on the Eternals. <clears throat> Next, I'm going to put in the little marvel, and I'm doing a little cheat here. Let's put all this in titling. If you go to File, Place Embedded, you'll see in the Assets folder I have this um, bottom credits, and that's just this. I'm going to put this on screen. And there you can see our um, Aurora needs to come down just a little bit about there. Okay, and the last thing I want to do is add kind of some consistent grain over this and also maybe just make her eye a little more in focus. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the titling, the two titling layers there. Uh, and above this artwork, I'm going to go to my actions and I have two actions I want to use. The first one is sharpen. I'm going to hit there. You can see it's um, added this sharpen layer up here. And what I'm going to do is hold down option and click on the mask. That's going to put a black mask on and then with a radial gradient white, I'm just going to go from her eye kind of away toward this eye here. You can see that's added a nice little sharpness to her eye there. And then the next thing I want to do is add some film grain. And I can do that with a pattern. So if I go to pattern, I'm going to go to the nuclear patterns. I have one that is a nice clean film grain and that is not it there. There it is. Okay, and the nice thing about this is because it's a pattern, I can adjust the size of it here, the scale, and then put this on overlay. And then I can just take down the fill here um, for how much I want. And it looks like around 20% is nice. Good, that looks nice. Let's turn the titling back on. So there you have it. That's how you recreate that poster in Photoshop. Now, in the course of this, I did use quite a few of my tools, which I use in almost every project that I do. These are all part of my recently released complete Photoshop tools and add-ons bundle, which you can find in a link in the description of this video. I do regularly have it on discount. So if you are one of my subscribers at nuclei.com, you will receive emails with discount codes or discount links. So look out for that. Um, it's a great pack of all sorts of tools that I use in so many of my Photoshop compositing projects, and hopefully you can find use for them as well. All right, here are some other tutorials to check out, and I will see you next time.